Joining me now here on the MMA Reporter, man, it's coming off a decision victory this past weekend at UFC San Antonio. Alex Hernandez, of course, a win over Francisco Trinaldo. Uh, first off, uh, fighting in San Antonio, like how could you describe that to the UFC fan? Dude, that was, I mean, the most electric, uh, energized, like just um, – euphoric moment of my life i mean that, that was absolutely insane the amount of energy we had in there boys boisterous bunch of dogs just going after it i mean it, it was incredible to be like the heart and soul of that whole experience and uh i'm so proud of my city for coming together the way they did and electrifying that arena it was it really was something incredible I, and i i kind of underestimate how great that experience would be uh, you know, obviously we can see a little bit of the damage there uh, under your left eye. So, uh, you know, what's, oh, yeah, uh, by the grace of the Brazilian gods, though, this shit was a, a fluke. A dutch, I ducked a spinning elbow and he was doing um, a full body tornado attack and his leg was lifting up. And I caught like the outside of the inside of one of his legs. The knee brushed my my uh, eye and cut me open. Uh, but it was like a completely accidental shot that hit me as I was coming in. And it was the only significant shot that was landed there. And shit like that, I was concerned was going to be perceived the wrong way as being, um, I mean, obviously it caused external damage, but it wasn't any kind of a clean shot that, that um, affected me in any way at all or even an intentional shot. So I'm glad that the refs didn't denote that against me. Yeah, I know. Uh, I believe it was Dominic Cruz on the broadcast. He even noted it when he saw the replay, saying, "Hey, it's it's more of a you know kind of a grazing type shot that that caused that." Uh, I mean, I'm sure you you've seen the criticism uh, of the fight. Well, what would you say to people who who criticize kind of how the fight went down? Uh, well, I say they ne- they've never been there. They don't know shit. So their their critics their criticisms don't really fall. They fall on deaf ears and not on solid ground. You know, I think. Um, but by the same token. I mean, critique away, because there's plenty of there's plenty of criticism to be had about the fight. One thousand percent. I'll be the first to say it. I'm the biggest critic I know, and I'm the most I'm the most critical about myself. So I mean, I, let the critics come. I'm not mad at it, and, and I'm not like trying to to dispute or pretend that that was like a, a a blowout fight. You know, it was a very close fight. I've watched it a few times. I and unbiasedly, completely give myself the the victory i think the third round uh he started to open up a bit and we had some some dog exchanges uh but besides that i i clearly won the fight i was the only person actively throwing any shots um it's difficult to move on opponent who's as seasoned as he is and who lets as little pass as he does um in the sense of looks you know he didn't really open up to give me any kind of offensive takes no jabs uh, limited footwork. Everything was heavy backs, uh, back and center, meaning that you know he'd almost bait his lead leg. He bait everything just so he could let out some bombs from Brazil. You know he wasn't really throwing any kind of feeding shots. Wasn't having any game. He was very theatrical. He tried to be animated. Animation doesn't draw you points. He didn't do anything, and all it was were bait tactics. And so we were ready for that. And I was having a difficult time. Um, closing the gap and getting around some of those arms, uh, so some of his limbs. But I think I also over-respected some things. The name of my game was to be patient and poised. And so for that, I'm extremely proud of myself. I'm abundantly proud of the fact that I could go 15 minutes unweathered and be, for the first time in my life, entirely composed. That's something I could build on. That's what champions are built on. So for me to exemplify that kind of composure, go back to the drawing board, put together – uh, the things that I do best and, and unify that moving forward. This is only a stepping stone fight. And so I, I'm, I'm happy with the progress I made, the psychological Everest I had to overcome coming out of New York. All of that are things that nobody can put into consideration, but myself, the real ones, the people on my team, the people that have experienced any of it for themselves or the analysts that really know the game. So, yeah, I mean, everyone will see in due time that this is, this is a stepping stone. This is a part of evolution. One of the things that I found uh, very interesting in what you said post-fight with the media backstage, you said you knew it was going to be a point system fight, and you noted about, look, I know he's a counter-striker, and I know you you can walk into things with him. And having that San Antonio crowd behind you, I mean, was there ever kind of that fear of like, man, I'm going to let that crowd, that noise get to me, and I'm going to open myself up to something? And, and that, that's why I'm proud. You know, That's why I'm proud of my personal performance because – 
six months ago, if you said this guy's never been knocked out, I would say I'm the guy to fucking do it. You know, I, I, I'm going to be the first. I, I knew that that wasn't going to be an easy test. He's heavy. And, and going into that fight, um, he was heavier than I thought he was going to be, really. Not that I expected any fucking, you know, ball of cotton, but he was uh, he was girthier than I expected. He was dense. He was, he was, a, he was extremely dense, heavy. And so uh, a lot of the attacks were stipend just, I mean, minus a prostate exam or two that he tried to throw me. He got a little bit under the undercarriage. Didn't realize those were lawful defenses, but uh, yeah, some of the attacks were kind of hindered just just off of the sheer weight he's got behind me. He's very strong, very defensive, and so I knew I had to be intelligent with the approach. I knew it was going to be a point fight, and I knew I had to keep my composure. And, and so I'm I'm pleased with the ability to do all those things and be an extremely gritty veteran that doesn't really give you anything. It's hard to look pretty against a guy like that that's literally not giving you anything or really even trying to open up to fight. He's just trying to catch a single shot that he can, and every shot he throws is 100%. You talked about a little earlier and even after a fight of continuing to evolve, of how you evolved from uh, you know, the fight in New York last year to this one. How, how do, what do you see as how you need to evolve heading into whenever your next fight is? It's just continuing to put together, man. So, I mean, we, we went kind of 180 on the spectrum for this fight. I got to find that happy, happy medium where, where I'm, I'm doing what I do best, but for the first time again, I'm I'm fucking composed, dude. I'm I'm abundantly clear in the head, and 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 that's that's what I can build everything off of. That's what a lot of these guys still haven't figured out, and people keep fucking forgetting, man. This is my fourth fight in the UFC, and all I fought are top contenders. I didn't get any of these fucking rough drafts. I didn't get any of these young scrappy kids to go out with. I've only fought the best. I've gone from zero to a hundred overnight, and I'm doing the damn thing, and I'm evolving every fucking time. The critics can say whatever they want, but they don't know because they've never been there, and no one's been there but me. No one's ever done what I'm doing right now. Gone in the top ten, broken it, and then only fought ten-plus wins uh, veterans in the game that are dangerous at, at the peak of their prime in the game. You know, and, and I'm, I'm putting it together. So for me, every single fight has been a step of evolution, has, has been a personal game for myself. I'm discovering new things within myself that I'm capable of. I'm young, I'm hungry, and, and the next one, that poor asshole across from me is not going to know what to expect when I'm in there. Is there a, a target date of, of when you want your next fight to take place? November 2nd, December 14th. Both are huge pay-per-view cards. I'm trying to get on either one of them. I mean, I you mentioned... You mentioned about, hey, you know, you come in here, you know, the guys that you have fought, uh, Benil Dariush, OAM, Cerrone, now, now Francisco. Um, is it kind of, is your mindset of like, look, I'm, I'm looking for someone who's got a, a number next to their name? 100%, man. I want to crack the top 10 on my next fight. I do that. I've got two, three more fights and I'm fighting for a belt. So, yeah, I, I need numbers. I need numbers. I say it all the time. I'm not, I'm not biased to style, size, shape. I don't give a shit who it is. I just want that number, and I want to be moving forward. You know, I've got guys ahead of me that, are, uh, that aren't that are booked that I know of right now. They're like Ally Quinta, Charles Oliveira, uh, Gillespie. These guys that are ahead of me that I don't think have matches made, I know the other guys do. Um, all shots I'm trying to take. Uh, and, and, and for me, I just got to recap a few bodily assessments, take inventory of uh, a few things keenly my shoulder and uh if that's if that's good then uh then I, I really want to line up for november december and any concerns about the shoulder that it might be take a little longer uh well i couldn't use it most of my fight camp. i tore uh my glenoid humeral which is the side of your labrum and so then that was my right arm and so for um my entire camp i nursed it for the last month I used it as little as possible so that I could try to muster it up for the fight night. Uh, in the back, I wasn't throwing a single two. I wasn't grappling. I wasn't doing anything with my right hand because I was just trying to save it for literally the moments of the fight. Um, and that's a fucking, I mean, I didn't have my right hand. I, that's a big deal. These are all factors people don't realize. And I mean, losing something like what I consider to be my money shot. You know, going in that fight and doing what I did, I'm proud of it. And I, I need, my coach said first and foremost, we need to recover. Because if we recovered, this camp could have been completely different. And there were shots in that fight that you didn't take because of your arm. So uh, recovery is first and foremost, making sure I'm healthy and then getting back in there as soon as possible. Was there ever a consideration to pull out of the fight? Uh, absolutely not. It was too big. Uh, I knew I had too many tools and, and I couldn't let the city down, man. I, I was I, 
may be the only opportunity I'll ever have to fight in my hometown. And the, I, the, the, the thought of missing that now, looking back on it, no fucking way. I'll take the criticism to the grave. I don't give a shit. That was an incredible experience. And I did the damn thing, and I did it far from my best. And again, these are these are just landmarks for me. These are these are just stepping stones in the progress to the top, the crescendo. It, it was a good move. Is, is there one thing you remember? You know, is it the walkout or or something? Just fighting in San Antonio. Like, if you think you know, fifteen, twenty years from now, will there be one moment you'll remember? Uh, I, me- I remember all of it. I mean, perfectly. That, and that that's what I'm talking about on the clarity I had in this fight. There were there was no anxiety. Um, I just had to overcome the psychological warfare coming off that last loss. But being in there, uh, the electricity walking into the arena, the chance during the fight afterwards was the most uh, spectacular moments, though. That was definitely the, the peak, you know, jumping into the crowd and surfing and, and seeing all my boys that I've had since, you know, we were 10 years old when I moved to Texas. Um, being in that environment and being voiced by by your family, your people. I mean, there's nothing like it in the world. So, uh, like I said, I, I'm so proud of my city. They, they really put on. It was amazing. Alex, man, as always, uh, I really appreciate time. Of course, uh, let one nothing follow on social media. If there's anybody else uh, you want to shout out, the floor is yours, man. Yeah, man. Uh, the Great 155, all over social media, Ohana Academy Northeast. Check us out. Uh, and I appreciate the time, brother.